Well, another project here at the Keith family farm. Um, we are standing in a spot on the farm that we haven't done a, a lot of work with over the years. It's kind of a, an odd area. The cows are in here a little bit out of the year. Um, not a spot that traditionally had a lot of deer sign or had a lot of deer that we hunted. You have to hunt it on east winds, which isn't an ideal situation. So it's been neglected over the over years. Um, but we're fixing to change that, so stay tuned. How many times do you hear the phrase, oh, it's just a big thicket, that's why the deer like it. I've heard that a lot in my life and, and career. Um, and this is a pretty good indicator, or what I would say when I hear th the word thicket, this is traditionally what it looks like. You've got trees 10, 15 foot tall right up here. You've got the scattered big trees. Of course, this one's dead now, but you've got a, a, a thicket. The actual thicket is by terms of a lot of stems per acre. So there's a lot of saplings that have grown up. They're 10, 15 foot tall. Um, there's not a lot of sunlight, but it still qualifies as a thicket. Well. If you're in an area, which it seems like with as much work and consulting we do across the country, habitat's poor in most places. Um, so what we're calling a thicket right here is still some of the better cover in the area. And 20 years ago, this was a lot more productive. So the deer were in it more. And as time went on, of course, timber around the area got a little worse. Uh, and this was this is bad, but it's still not as bad as it is in other places. So they still use it. So therefore deer are in the thicket. But we're going to make it a lot better. When you look at this, there's a lot of stems per acre, but there's not a lot of food within reach of the deer. Um, and there's still just cover because it's cover by default. And so we want to make it better. We want to get a lot more cover, herbaceous food, herbaceous plants down within reach of the deer. Right now it's a lot of woody stems that are 10 to 15 foot tall. So today we're firing up the chainsaws and we're getting to work. What's the scenario? So like I said earlier, it's a southeast to an east wind setup. Maybe thread the needle and get a little bit south wind. But we cut in this little opening here, I don't know, five years ago, four years ago, something like that. And really haven't done much with it. We just wanted to cut it out and see what it looked like. and. Um, now we're looking at going, okay, this is a pretty good, during the rut, there's a lot of scrapes along the edge around here. Um, Chad's getting the saws ready back behind me on the four wheeler. We've got an eastern red cedar back on this end. That's going to be a great scenario for a tree stand. So southeast, south winds or east winds cut in a big thicket, clear cut basically acre to two acres right here just southeast of this stand to where during the rut, does are trying to hide in cover, thick cover, uh, and avoid those pesky bucks, or a buck has found a receptive doe and pushed her into the thickest cover he can find to keep her away from the other bucks, this is gonna be the spot. Well, other bucks or bucks haven't found a receptive doe yet, they're cruising on the downwind side of these thickets trying to scent check and see if there's receptive doe hiding out in it opening like this there's going to be scrapes already using um already using the clear cut to our advantage by putting it downwind of us or upwind of us we're hunting on the downwind side and uh, so that's kind of the scenario and it's paid off for us in the past on another stand we call doll heart now we're doing it again right here and we'll see what happens i'm going to take a quick walk through this spot so you guys can see kind of what it looks like here's what's a little bit sad about the whole thing is even though the habitat is poor the deer are still really in here and uh, it's just it's kind of that whole thing with cedar tree thickets um, just because there's deer in there doesn't mean they wouldn't prefer to have something more beneficial um, a lot of times those cedar thickets where deer are really using them is in areas where there really isn't any other cover um, or cover of that quality as in it's wide open timber or a cedar thicket which has a little bit of side cover 
And so uh, today we're firing the chainsaw up and we're gonna get some cover and food on the ground and make it preferred cover uh, for the area. So I'm standing in kind of one of the areas, middle of one of the areas that I'm gonna cut out. And it's kind of a, we'll go through some of the trees and why we're gonna cut them. So uh, if you look behind me, we've got a decent black oak. And uh, well, if I move up here, you can see it's a decent little tree. It's pretty straight. It's got a fork, unfortunately, about 10 to 15 foot up, but probably get one log out of it in the future. And so uh, it's going to be cut, or <laughs> excuse me, it will be cut in the future, not right now. And uh, let me step over here. We've got flowering dogwood, which is a great tree, um, but we've got a, a ton of them in here. And I like these trees to cut and let them stump sprout or hinge a few. Um, great cover, provides a lot of different benefits from, uh, from berries to woody browse. And uh, so we're gonna cut them. There's a bunch of them in here. We've got another bigger one right here. There's several other back over here. Um, so they're gonna get cut. We've got a sassafras, which is just a, can dominate here in the Ozarks and places. Another big dogwood right here. Step up here, we have an elm tree, which uh, is probably 30 foot tall. Doesn't provide a lot of benefit for uh, the game species we're targeting here. Um, so when I say that, it doesn't provide a lot of benefit in the, in the shape it's in, being 30 foot tall. But if we cut this tree and it stump sprouts, the deer, for whatever reason, love to forage, in my experience, on the stump sprouts of an elm tree. So we're going to cut this one for sure. Um, so there's a lot of species in here that are 30 foot tall, which would be fine if we were looking to grow timber. Um, even then we would still manage this and open it up and let them have a little bit more nutrients and uh, not have to compete with, with each other. So today we're cutting, putting bedding cover. Not only is it great bedding and winter forage for the deer, it's also great nesting habitat for the turkeys. Uh, we're not too far away from one of my favorite fields, turkey hunt growing up. And, uh, you know, even cottontail rabbits, there's been several, I can remember rabbit hunting just up the hill from here. Um, hopefully more quail one day. Woodland species, birds, they need that open area to chase insects. Summer tanagers, um, being a species that I'm talking about, and they don't do, they're not gonna do so hot in closed canopy forest. Open this up, gonna do a little better. So we're gonna get after it. edge feathering video we did it got too dark we worked cut till dark but this time we didn't cut till dark but it's almost dark so uh, the footage might be a little dark I'll try to lighten it up but uh, we've cut several tanks probably four or five total and uh, we are now wrapping it up for the day but we did quite a bit got a lot of cover on the ground a lot of food on the ground notice that a lot of our softwood trees 
have already formed a lot of buds. Um, so it's automatic food. Now there's tons of stump sprouts that will occur, which will be more food uh, in the future as well as cover. So big difference. I'll try to run through here.